Taiwan sees a recent spate of political corruption cases, but some say the problem is more long-running. Oh, it used to be far worse. Um, it used to be that corruption was the norm and not the exception. Groups supporting migrant fisher rights say a Taipei workshop on human trafficking is overlooking a key issue. Former U.S. President Donald Trump faces yet another indictment involving his attempts to overturn the country's last election. If the American voter chooses Kamala Harris, there's a real chance that the president will have to press his defense in court. Plus, Taiwan is replacing traditional hunting traps with safer ones to protect native Formosan black bears. Warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Ian Kavat. Yet another high profile lawmaker is facing questioning over corruption. It's the latest in a string of corruption cases involving politicians across the country's political spectrum. John Van Trias reports. Agents raid the office of Guomindang legislator Sra Katsao before questioning him for hours afterwards. Prosecutors allege he accepted bribes from at least five green energy companies between 2020 and 2023. Now out on bail and barred from leaving the country, he faces increasing scrutiny as lawmakers from across the spectrum demand the case be handled swiftly and fairly. But this is far from the only corruption scandal brewing, with politicians of all party affiliations in the crosshairs. It's not yet a week since ruling Democratic Progressive Party lawmaker Lin Yijin was bailed amid charges of embezzlement. And the former vice premier is facing bribery and corruption charges, too. Meanwhile, Ko Wenzhe, the chair and founder of the Taiwan People's Party, is also fighting back against criticism for using election subsidies to buy personal property. Even an official involved in an independent campaign is in trouble. Pingdong County Council Speaker Zhou Dianlun has just been sentenced to four years. Though a Guomindang member, Joe worked to help get independent candidate and electronics tycoon Terry Guo on the ballot in last year's presidential election. Prosecutors say he paid voters to sign the petition to make that happen. Joe says he'll appeal, and his daughter says he's innocent. But prosecutors are standing firm. President Lai Qingde made stamping out corruption one of his campaign pledges. And while the ongoing investigations show that prosecutors aren't shy about going after graft and bribery, the number of cases shows the scale of the problem across Taiwan's political spectrum. Klein Wang and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. For a closer look at this issue, John Van Trieste spoke to political analyst Courtney Donovan Smith. So what do you make of this recent spate of corruption cases? Is it a sign that corruption's on the rise in Taiwan overall, or just that prosecutors have gotten more proactive about uh, cracking down on it? I can't say for sure. Um, it's quite possible that they're getting more proactive. Uh, it also could be that corruption has indeed ticked up over the last few years. I don't know if there's a connection here, but traditionally, uh, William Lai has been associated with anti-corruption efforts. Uh, particularly when he was the mayor of Tainan. Uh, so this may be a top-down thing, but I, I, there's no definitive proof on that that I'm aware of. Uh, what does it say about Taiwan's political culture? And is this a, a new low point, or has it always been quite this bad? Oh, it used to be far worse. Um, it used to be that corruption was the norm and not the exception, and now it appears that it, it still remains the exception. It's worth noting that there are 113 seats in the legislature, and there's two of them uh, under investigation currently. Um, so, you know, we're not looking at a huge percentage here. That's less than 2%. Um, it is true that a fairly high percentage of the uh, county council uh, speakers are under uh, are under investigation. That's not a surprise. Local governments have often been a little bit more of a hotbed of corruption, particularly in the center and the south. And uh, do you think that we're going to see, you know, big changes after this slew of scandals, or will it continue to be business as usual? 
I think that with the DPP and the KMT, because relatively speaking, we're looking at a, at a small number of people r relative to the massive scale of the parties. I don't think we're going to see big changes uh, in either of those two parties. Uh, at this point, however, in the TPP, either, uh, you know, at the very least, there's been gross mismanagement of their financial uh, disclosure forms. And, and frankly, there's a, there's a decent chance that they're just going to collapse, that they may not, no longer be electable. The latest Formosa poll that just came out a couple days ago, their uh, n people's negative feelings toward the party drum, dropped, uh, jumped by about 16%. Once again, that was political analyst Courtney Donovan-Smith on Taiwan's recent wave of corruption scandals. Former Vice Premier Zhang Wen-chan has been released on bail after being charged with corruption. Zhang paid bail of over 800,000 US dollars just a day after he was indicted. The Democratic Progressive Party heavyweight is accused of accepting bribes to redistrict a development project while he was mayor of Taoyuan City from 2014 to 2022. Prosecutors are requesting a 12-year sentence in the case. Some of Zhang's co-defendants have also been released on bail. Taiwan is hosting a workshop on human trafficking, bringing together experts from around the world for discussions. But human rights groups say there's a large gap in the event's coverage, Reese Ayers reports. At this conference center in downtown Taipei, hundreds of people are gathered for a two-day workshop about human trafficking. Hosted by the Interior Ministry, the event invites experts from around the world to talk about the various forms human trafficking takes. This year, touching on online scams, forced labor and the organ trade, among other issues. The annual conference follows the release of the U.S. State Department's annual human trafficking report, which evaluates countries on how they're dealing with the issue. This year, Taiwan has again achieved Tier 1 status, which means the U.S. thinks Taipei is making, quote, serious and sustained efforts to eliminate human trafficking. But based on the agenda for this year's workshop, the Taiwan Association for Human Rights believes one big issue is going unaddressed. Uh, in Taiwan, the lack of focus on the fishes issue led to a protest outside the workshop venue. But the government says it's a problem they're working on. We passed the Yi the most recent U.S. report on human trafficking found that in 2023, Taiwanese authorities identified a total of 282 trafficking victims. That's an almost 20 percent decrease on the year before. But there have been more cases of foreign nationals being trafficked this year. Just this month, the Taiwan Association for Human Rights reported on a case involving a group of migrant fishers forced to work for 15 months without pay. The association is now calling on the government to better address what it says is the biggest forced labor issue in the country, starting with using events like this one to tackle the most central cases of human trafficking. Alex Chen and Rhys says in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. U.S. prosecutors have hit former U.S. President Donald Trump with a new indictment. The charges once again focus on his attempts to overturn his 2020 election defeat. Louise Watt has the details. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been putting all his energy into political battles. But now he faces another fight on the legal front. U.S. prosecutors have filed a revised indictment against him over his efforts to overturn his election defeat to Joe Biden in 2020. Prosecutors are trying to salvage the case against Trump after a Supreme Court ruling gave broad immunity to former presidents. This indictment lays out the same four charges, including conspiring to defraud the United States. But it narrows down the allegations and focuses not on Trump as then president, 
but Trump as a candidate seeking re-election. Trump's running mate condemned the revised indictment from special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah, I haven't read the whole thing, but it looks like Jack Smith doing more of what he does, which is filing these absurd lawsuits in an effort to influence the election. Trump has previously pleaded not guilty to the charges, linked in part to his false claims that the 2020 election was stolen from him and his urging of supporters to march on the Capitol in protest. The subsequent attack on the seat of the U.S. Congress, violent and unprecedented. But a trial is unlikely to happen before this election, just over two months away. If the American voter chooses Kamala Harris, there's a real chance that the president will have to press his defense in court. And we'll have to find out through our normal legal processes whether he's guilty of the charges against him. If the president wins, that process will never take place. For Trump, then, at stake in this election, not just the presidency, but possibly also staying out of prison. Scott Huang and Louise Watt for Taiwan Plus. The foreign ministry has called a reported push by China and the Solomon Islands to exclude Taiwan from the Pacific Islands Forum regrettable. According to the newspaper The Australian, the Solomon Islands will table a motion at this year's forum happening in Tonga to strip Taiwan of its development partner status. That motion has allegedly been spearheaded by China, with Beijing instructing the Solomon Islands to prevent Taiwan's attendance at the 2025 summit. For more on this year's Pacific Island forums, our reporter Rosie Greninger spoke with Hideyuki Shiozawa of the Saskua Peace Foundation. What are the key issues being raised at the Pacific Islands Forum this year? The uh, main theme is the transformation, transformative resilience Pacifica, they say like that. In their slogan, they say, build better now. So they want to put geopolitical condition aside and they want to focus on their own actual issues on the ground, including economy also. Yes. Climate change, but uh, mitigation is to ask developed countries and industrial countries to reduce gas emission. But the uh, actual impact they face on the ground in the Pacific is like sea level rise, impact of disasters, extreme uh, weather. Taiwan's foreign ministry has just responded to accusations that China and the Solomon Islands are attempting to exclude Taiwan from the forum. How and why are they trying to do this? Simply, Chinese government won't, uh, doesn't want Taiwan to be included in the discussion. But uh, technically, in the Pacific Island Forum, there are some categories to work with. Inside PIF, there's a membership, full member, associate member, and observers. And other countries or organizations outside the region is categorized dialogue partner. So it depends on the host country to accept Taiwan to join the round table or not. So this time, Chinese government support a lot to organize this forum to provide funding to build the facility a lot, maybe multi-million dollars they spent. I think Chinese government doesn't want Taiwan to be involved in the discussion. That's why maybe they indirectly ask for more island government to exclude. In the PIF related meetings, there are always some argument between Chinese delegation and Taiwan delegation. What would be the impact if Taiwan is pushed out? In 2019, there was a, the movement of migration countries to withdraw from PIF. It started in February 2019. And the cause was Taiwan related issues. Because at the time, PIF Secretariat, I mean, uh, Secretary General, mentioned in the open space that PIF wants to increase the engagement with mainland China. I mean, motion to exclude Taiwan from the discussion may cause difficulties among Pacific Island countries. But uh, only three uh, countries uh, recognize Taiwan this time. That was Hideyuko Shiozawa of the Saskua Peace Foundation speaking with reporter Rosie Greninger. Coming up after the break, we ask what Japan's next move will be after Chinese planes breached its airspace. Stay tuned. Greetings from CNN. On behalf of our team, 
I'd like to extend our heartfelt congratulations to Taiwan Plus on its third year anniversary. Taiwan's English language channel to the world, it's very important. Your discussions of international affairs contribute greatly to advancing understanding of Taiwan. I think it's a very important addition to Taiwan's ability to tell its story around the world. We greatly value our ongoing partnership and look forward to continuing a mutually successful collaboration in the years ahead. In the minds of many of your listeners, it really is Taiwan Plus Plus Plus. And so let me wish you a very happy birthday. Happy third anniversary. A happy third anniversary. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. 30 Chinese military aircraft and seven Navy vessels have been detected around Taiwan within a 24-hour period. The Defense Ministry says 27 of the aircraft crossed the median line between the two countries and entered Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ. This is not Taiwan's sovereign territory, but is used as a defensive buffer. China has increased its military activity around Taiwan since President Lai Qingde took office in May. This week's Chinese incursion into Japan's airspace is raising fresh concerns over the country's security. For more on what Japan can do to respond to future breaches, our reporter Jaime Okon spoke to Robert Ward, Japan chair at the International Institute for Strategic Studies based in London. What does Japan do now, seeing that China has eroded the, uh, the Japan's ADIZ and its territory airspace with this latest breach? Does it stick to the current strategy or does it have to change its game plan? Japan was an early mover, uh, an early identifier of uh, the strategic threat from China. From 2012, um, after Xi Jinping rose to power 20, 2013, um, Chinese intrusion into the uh, Senkaku Daiutai uh, space uh, really ramped up and it's been uh, elevated uh, ever since. So um, Japan is used to uh, what I would call territorial needling. It's a tense equilibrium around the Senkaku Daiutai uh, space, um, uh, but this is not new for them. Obviously, the intrusion of the uh, military intelligence gathering plane into Japanese airspace, its, it's strategy, I think, um, uh, is, is sound. Um, I think the the issue here is uh, China is sort of constantly pushing uh, where it sees uh, space, um, and um, you have to be as a uh, you know Japan and other countries in the region has to be really vigilant about this and its deterrence and response deterrence and response capabilities are key. Just further down south, Taiwan is also no stranger to Chinese military aircraft operating around uh, its airspace, around its ADIZ. I want to ask you, do you think there's a, a window or some sort of avenue for cooperation there, given that Japan and Taiwan share similar threats? So there's, um, there's a couple of uh, issues here. I think one is the um, defense and uh, response capabilities. So the absolutely critical for the region is this Japan-US relationship. And without that, um, then I think it, it becomes a very different uh, strategic space. So it's really important for Taiwan, for Philippines, for other countries uh, that want the status quo, that this Japan-US relationship continues to deepen and continues to uh, evolve and obviously has to boost its own uh, deterrence and response capabilities. With Taiwan, obviously, um, it's more difficult uh, because of, ta of um, Taiwan's legal status and, and the way that Japan um, uh, responds to that. Um, so politi while political connections uh, between Japan and Taiwan seem to have been uh, proliferating over the, in, in, in over the last couple of years, um, on the military front, uh, intelligence front, it's, bit, it's more difficult. Um, and you can see that from Japan's point of view, uh, China is really important for Japan in terms of its economy, uh, investments and so on. They're, they're right next door to each other. Um, so Japan does have to tread uh, very carefully. But at some point, to make the um, deterrence front uh, complete, of course, you need maximum uh, intelligence sharing. So uh, whether that will happen or not, at, at what speed, I mean, I, I don't know, because Japan's obviously being very careful. But uh, that would definitely seem a logical step, yeah. That was security analyst Robert Ward with the International Institute for Strategic Studies. People in Pakistan are facing mounting unrest after violent attacks by an armed militant group. As Tiffany Wong reports, it's causing tensions to flare in a politically sensitive region. 
Mourning those killed by violence in Pakistan, at least 73 people have died in attacks by separatist militants in the country's largest province. The Baloch Liberation Army, or BLA, claimed responsibility for the attacks, mostly targeting Punjabis, who make up the largest ethnic group in the country. The BLA say they want independence for the poor but resource-rich region to prevent its exploitation by outsiders. They're opposing a series of China-led projects such as a port and a golden copper mine that form part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. The country's interior minister says the government is working to coordinate a response to the militant group. The best thing is that the president, the prime minister, the army chief, all of the concerns of the United States and the of Sunday's attacks also targeted bridges, highways and railways, which are essential to keeping the remote region connected with the rest of the country. But continued ethnic attacks may divide the region even more. So, if there are such conditions, who will come into Balochistan? We will not be able to come into Balochistan. We will not be able to come into Balochistan. We will not be able to come into Balochistan. We will not be able to come into Balochistan. We will not बिल्कुल खौफ महसूस होते हैं जब ये इधर डाडर से अंदर आते हैं तो ये पहाड़ी इलाके खौफ तो होते हैं हमें देवर लोग लेकिन हम कठे ही आते दो तीन गाड़ियां कठे करके फिर कानवाई में आते हैं तो ये पता नहीं था कि आगे ये होगा अभी हुआ है अभी खड़े हैं हम क्या करें Now as the decades long insurgency becomes more violent people in Balochistan will bear the brunt of the consequences as the government works to restore order to the area Chris Ma and Tiffany Wong for Taiwan Plus Japan has issued its highest storm warning as Typhoon Shanshan creeps toward the country's southwest. More than 800,000 people on Kyushu Island and in the central Aichi and Shizuoka prefectures have been ordered to evacuate. Airlines and railways have cancelled their services. Winds and heavy rains brought by Shanshan are expected to lash the country in the coming days. Japan has only issued an alert of this level three times before. Over 100 Indonesian civil society organizations have voiced concern over alleged police violence during recent demonstrations in the country. The group signed a letter calling for an investigation after human rights organizations found evidence of excessive use of force by police. They focus on what they say is the police's indiscriminate use of tear gas against peaceful protesters. Widespread demonstrations have broken out in Indonesia in recent days over controversial electoral reforms, with some turning violent. Indonesian police say they are using tear gas according to standard procedures. Taiwanese conserv conservationists and indigenous hunters are teaming up to promote traps safer for the endangered Formosan black bear. Our reporter Sandy Chi has the details. The spear's paw was wounded by a steel trap, the type often used by indigenous hunters in Taiwan to ensnare deer and wild boar. That's what happened to Zimmon, a one-and-a-half-year-old male Formosan black bear rescued from a trap last October. Although he was released back into the wild after treatment, he was found dead weeks later. Zimmon is just one of 18 bears discovered in traps in Taiwan since 2014. The NGO, Taiwan Black Bear Conservation Association, says six of these animals were found dead. To prevent such injuries and deaths, hunters, farmers and conservationists are collaborating to protect these animals by adopting a new type of trap. This new design can capture smaller prey without tightening to the point of causing severe injury or amputation. 
因为它的口径小，熊的手掌很宽，你看这样这样子踩，它不会完全，除非它踩偏了，弹起来它只会打到这个弹起来打到这个手指而已，这样子，它不会完全卡到这个手掌上面。So far, the new snares seem to be working, which it shows bears getting away unharmed. I want to help the snakes, and then we will be able to get more and more. We can also help our owners to understand the snake's life. We can also help the outsiders to be very careful to catch them. To date, over 5,600 of these traps have been given away for free in Taiwan. By working together, hunters, farmers and conservationists may one day remove the foremost and black bear from the endangered species list. Scott Huang and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, France has celebrated 80 years since its liberation from German forces in World War II. Check out these festivities in Marseille. I'm Ikevat. Take care. See you next time.